With the recent implementation of Dynamic Export in South Australia, we have the Goodwe and GE team here to talk about it. Dean, can you tell us a little more about why this uh, requirement was introduced in SA and uh, what are Goodwe doing about it? Hi John, the reason for the implementation is so that SAPN can ramp down or control the amount of power that solar systems are sending back into the grid and therefore ensuring the stability and operational maintenance moving forward. Okay, and uh, what Goodwe products are currently compliant? So we have three series that are compliant natively, and when we mention native, we're talking about being compliant without the need for the third-party hardware device in between. So we have three series currently that we can uh, achieve this natively, which is the DNS G3, the MS G3, and the SDT G2 series. We also have a number of series that will be compliant in the coming weeks, including the XS G3, the SMT, the ET series 5 to 30 kilowatts, the EH series, SBP G2, and ESG2 series. So you mentioned third party hardware devices. What do you mean by that and what models are, are fall into that category? So some of our older models or models that have now been superseded by newer generation um, require an additional third party hardware device to achieve this. And we've listed those below on your screen. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Dean. Thanks, John. I've got Gopi here with me from GE. Gopi, can you tell us a little bit more about the SAPN requirements? Definitely, John. As you guys are already aware, the SA government has recently introduced the dynamic export limit, which means starting from 1st of July, any inverter which is less than 30 kVA has to have a remote capability of achieving this export limit. So how we can achieve this export limit? There are a couple of ways of doing it. The first one is the native model. An SA native model, which means the inverter can talk directly to the SAPN server and the SAPN should be able to control the inverter's export limit. The other way of doing it is with the help of third-party hardware devices, such as gateways or smart meters. So, with the help of a gateway or smart meters, the SAPN should be able to control the inverter's output. And in terms of the GE product range, what's the compliance situation with that? Good question, John. Currently, the GEP 5 to 20 kilowatt range is already listed with SAPN, and this can achieve through the Meti model, which means the retailer doesn't have to buy a third-party hardware devices for that. And for the rest of the current generation model, the GEP 3 to 5 and GEP 5 to 10 kilowatt, we are currently working with Catch Power Relay to achieve this dynamic export limit. That's great. And in terms of the new generation models, which I believe are going to come through in the coming months, exactly. what will happen with those? Yeah, in, in the next two to three months, we'll be launching the next generation GEP 3 to 6 kilowatt and the GEP 5 to 10 kilowatt models. And once it's available, uh, we should be able to achieve through the native model. So without the help of any third party devices, we should be able to achieve the SAP and dynamic. Experience. That's great. That's great news. Gopi, thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thanks for the time. Okay, I've got Mike with me, who's the Service and Operations Manager for Goodwe. Mike, what does an installer, d does an installer or retailer have to do anything differently? Hi John, actually there's no difference for retailer or installers. They usually just do the job as they usually do. And just keep in mind they need to install the export limit device with the inverter. For example, if it's a DNS G3 inverter, installer can either install the CT90, GM1000 or HomeKey1000. Depends on different scenario. If it's three-phase inverter, they install the GM3000 or HomeKey3000. So there's no technical difference for installer. And just keep in mind the inverter need to be connected to the Wi-Fi so that we can uh, remotely control this inverter according to SAPN's request. So what does an installer need to do when applying for Grid Connect, Mike? John, when installer or retailer fill up the Grid Connection application form, besides of customer's details, they need to select flexible connection for Goodwill and GE, they select inverter inbuilt DAX. Then they select the export limit device accordingly. So it's a very simple process? That's very simple, John. Wonderful. Mike, thank you.